So far, our selectors have been made up of a single HTML element. <clears throat> so here's one that has HTML as the selector, and that'll apply to the HTML element. Down here, we have one that's an H1 element, and that will apply these styles to all of the H1 elements in the document. But in each of these cases, we've used a single element as the selector. Well, with CSS, you're, the selectors be, can become very complex. And so we're going to learn some other options for combining selectors and actually combining different elements in a variety of ways. And the first ones we're going to learn about are called contextual selectors. And that's when we use <clears throat> two different elements and then we connect them in different ways. And, and they are based on how those elements are related. So this is the one that we've used where it just simply selects all elements that type. So if we just use P as a selector, it will, it will apply this style to every P element in the document. <clears throat> Multiple elements, this is when you put a comma between them. So this is P comma H1, and this will apply it to all the elements of type P and all the elements of H1. So here, what you're doing is just saying this set of styles, I wanted to apply it to multiple elements. And so you just list the elements with commas between them and you can include as many as you want. This one now are related by how they fit. So when we have them like this, we always, it, it makes sense to talk about the P element. Where the style is gonna go is on the P element. That's the last one listed but it's ones that are specifically descendants of article. So notice over here under a side, there's a paragraph that doesn't get this style because it is not a descendant of article. But over here, we have paragraphs that are descendants of articles and they will all get that style when the selector is article space P. We need the greater than sign goes in there. It's still going to apply to the paragraph tag, that one that comes at the end, but it's only for the children of article rather than all the descendants, just the children. So notice how the grandchildren down here aren't included. It's only the children, which are the ones that are directly inside the article element. And for that, you use the greater than sign between the two elements. Now, when you put a plus between them, then they're talking about uh, adjacent siblings. So these are talking about siblings. So again, we're gonna apply it to the paragraph. The P tag is, the P element is the last one listed, but we're only gonna apply it to the paragraph that is right next follows the H1. So they're siblings, H1 and P are siblings, but it's only the one right next to H1. In fact, right after H1. So in this case, <clears throat> There's H1, it has two siblings that are paragraph tags, but with the plus, it only applies it to the one that just follows H1. And under a side, there's only one paragraph sibling, and it is right next to the H1, so it will get it as well. When you use a tilde between them, then it talks about all the siblings. So in this case, we're going to have all the paragraphs that are a sibling to H1. And so down here under the header, there are three siblings, H1, paragraph, and paragraph, and it will pick up, the style will be applied to both those paragraphs because they're siblings of the H1. Same with the side, it'll pick up all the paragraphs that are sibling to the H1. Then the asterisk, the asterisk means any type. So now this will apply to any element that is a child of article. And so that's what the asterisk is. It doesn't matter what it is. So in this case, it'll apply to the header element and the three P elements. Let's go in our code and we'll add one of these uh, that, are, that use more than one element and how they're added. So we're gonna do this in the aside and back quote, block quote sections. And we're going to use the ancestor descendant version. And so we're going to say a side is going to be the ancestor and then any descendant that is of type block quote. So the way we do that is we put them together with a space and this will say, apply the style to the block quote that is a, a descendant of an aside. And if we look in the home, we can find those. So we go down here, we find the aside and inside there, there are several descendants. There's a block quote, there's a block quote, 
So there's several of these block quotes that are all inside or descendants of the aside element. All right, we're going to apply color, which will change the text color, and we'll use RGB, and the amount of red will be 232, the amount of green will be 165, and the amount of blue will be 116. And there's the color that that will be. Okay, let's save that and then go refresh it and see what a difference it'll make. Now this is gonna be in the aside section. So watch over here and see how that changes. And there what we see is that text color changed.